Hello and welcome to Sitter's Baked Goods. Today we're going to be making some banana bread. It's a very simple recipe. We're going to be using muffin method which is putting all liquid ingredients together and all dry ingredients together and then mixing them at the end. Now let's get into it. Now let's start with getting the dry into our bowl. I'm making two loaves today so we're going to double the recipe that's in the description below. Now there's one exception to dry ingredients going into the dry ingredients, which is sugar. Sugar goes in with the wet ingredients because it helps draw out moisture from the bananas, making it a semi-liquid. So all we're going to be putting together will be the flour, the baking soda, and the salt. Remember, we're doubling the recipe because we're making two loaves. Okay, handy dandy salt right here. Always salt your stuff. Okay, now before we just move on, we're going to want to aerate our flour. You can do this by sifting or by whisking. I like the whisk because it not only mixes the air into the flour, but it also mixes the salt and the baking soda throughout the flour so that you don't get pockets of baking soda, which you don't want. Now we'll put this off to the side and get onto our liquids. Now I've pre-weighed the bananas. That's how I knew how much we were going to make today. So this is 600 grams. But again, all recipes will be in the description below. Make sure it's always zeroed. And always work clean. If it's clumping up on you, put a slice of bread in there overnight and just keep that bread in there until uh, all the sugar's used up. And what that will do is it will allow the sugar to stop clumping. Now there is a lot of sugar in this recipe. So if you have health concerns or just don't want to use that much sugar because you think it's too sweet or whatever, you can have the sugar in this recipe and it will still work out any more than half and it doesn't turn out as nice as you'd like. So let's start mixing this up. Now that that's mixed up, make sure you don't have any large chunks of banana or the mixture throughout your whole loaf will have big chunks here and there. If you like that, that's fine. But to get a nice smooth consistency, you wanna make sure that everything's mixed in nicely. Also, it helps with breaking up the brown sugar. Make sure to work clean, keep paper towel underneath these so if any drips do happen, you're not messing up your counter. Now my eggs are a bit small. I'm about 20 grams short, but don't worry too much. You can replace that with something else that's a liquid. So for example, if you had 20 extra grams of bananas, that's fine. 20 extra grams of buttermilk, sorry, yeah, 20 grams. Any liquid would be fine for this, except for the brown sugar. We don't wanna add any more brown sugar. So what I'm gonna do is once I mix this up together, I'm gonna to add in 20 extra grams of buttermilk just to get the weight proper and to make sure there's enough liquid in there, okay? Okay, now before putting in the buttermilk, make sure it looks like this. You see how there's no eggs visible? Buttermilk is acidic and can curdle your eggs. So make sure that your eggs are nicely mixed in before you add any buttermilk or any acidic thing for any other baking as well. So if you're putting in lemon juice for 
For example, like cheesecake or something like that. Make sure that the eggs are nicely mixed in or you could make scrambled eggs. And no one wants to eat scrambled eggs. Add in the buttermilk. Now remember I'm adding that extra 20 grams. If you're doing this at home, it's not a big deal that 20 grams isn't going to do anything. But in a bakery sense, you want to have the same weight for everything so you're not ripping off your customers. And in large batches, say I made 20 loaves or more, I want to make sure that definitely the weight's there, but also the liquid because say I lost 20 grams for every two or 10 grams per loaf. Well, that's 200 grams I've lost in the end, which is a fifth of a loaf I've lost. And you can't have that when you're starting your own business. So now that these are in, let's mix this up and I'll come back. Now working with muffin method, you always put your dry into your wet. Now for this specific one, there's one extra step. It's just a little extra step just to make sure that the fat is mixed in properly. I always mix in the oil at the very end. But because this is a baking soda recipe and not a baking powder recipe, as soon as I mix this into here, it's going. So I need to get my oven going. So we're gonna put that on. 350. While that's heating up, we're gonna weigh out our oil. Be very careful, you don't want to spill anything. And go slow, no rush. You need to make sure the oven's going before anything else. Okay, that's enough oil. Now there's one other thing, and this is for design. We need to grab a plate, and it doesn't matter how much you use, you just need to get enough. So we're just going to put a little bit of oil on here. Just like that much, not a whole lot. Then we're gonna grab our handy little tool. I can find it. Here it is, our handy little tool. And all we're gonna do, and this is what makes that the beautiful split down the middle, is you put this tool in here and then touch your dough. And what that does is it, it leaves an area for the loaf to break on itself once it's in the oven. If you don't do this, your loaf will break wherever it feels like rather than where you want it to. So to get a good design, it's good to do it this way. So while that's heating up, we'll just put this off to the side. And because this isn't fully heat up, heated up yet, we're gonna set up our pans. So make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure there's no dust or anything in there. Give it a nice little clean. I'm gonna actually have to wash these. Okay, sorry about that. Now that it's washed, let's just put all our wet, dry, and oil out of our way. And just get this prepared. I'll keep this just up here. Okay, so doesn't matter how you cut it, as long as it's a nice strip and it's longer to go up the top on either end. You don't need to go up the sides, just these two ends. So, I luckily have a perfectly uh, length parchment paper. Make sure it's parchment paper. Wax paper will burn in the oven. And so I just need to make sure that it's the right width. Now, that looks fine. The thing is, you see how it's curling? You want to put it the opposite way so that it sticks down the other way. And two, you don't have to cover all of this. That's not neat. This is just to lift it out at the end. You're still going to put a knife around everything so that you can lift it out. But this just gives you two little handles to pull out and it makes sure the bottom doesn't stick. That's the main thing. And again, let's do the next one. And the beauty about these is you can reuse them that day. So, for example, if I'm making 
10 loaves a day, but my oven can only make five. I put those five in, I take those five out, I can take these off and then reuse them immediately. After that, you can't reuse them. Because they're gonna have the same mixture on them, and because this will this parchment won't stick, it'll come off nicely. But a day later, two days later, any of that, and there's still bacteria on there that will go bad after a while. But same day, everything's died from inside the oven. So everything will be fine for that day. The other beautiful thing is, let's say I had to cut out a big pan and I needed a nice piece like this, but I only needed this square. Or sorry, let's do it this way. Let's say I needed uh, just this amount. This extra piece that I need to cut off, I can just use save and use whenever I need them. Okay, so now that we're at this stage, make sure you have your oil ready to go so that we can just go bam, bam, bam. Now make sure you still have your weigh scale because I have two loaves. How do I make sure that they're even? I weigh out the exact amount that it should be. And because I added the correct amount of grams, even though I lost some from the eggs, I added the buttermilk. I have it on my recipe what it weighs and I can just weigh that into each pan and boom every time the same product. But make sure you scrape everything out of here because I've weighed it to be exactly as much as everything out of this bowl. So let's get started. Now with our dry ingredients we want to go a third at a time. And when we're just about mixed everything in, we add the next third, just about mixed in, add the next third, and so on. So let's start. Sp spread it across the top. Don't just lump it all in one area. We want to make sure this is mixed evenly. So once that's in, we'll start mixing, and let's keep going. Remember, once the flour is in there, you don't want to mix too much or the gluten will react too much and become tough, chewy. You want this to be more like a cake rather than a bread. As you can see, we're almost fully mixed in, so we'll stop. Another third in, keep going. Make sure you get your sides. At the very end, I'm gonna use a scraper to make sure all the sides are in. So as you can see, it's almost all in. All the last bit of it. Nothing left in here, perfect. Let's put this in the sink. And continue. So you want this to just be mixed. Any more mixing is bad. There is an option to add in chocolate chips if you like. This is when you would add them in. You'd put the chocolate chips with your dry ingredients to make sure that they're mixed in properly. Okay, let's grab my scraper just to make sure that this flour along the sides is all mixed in and we're just gonna go slow and steady. We'll use this for later. And I can just put it right here for now. Okay, so now that that's all mixed in, we're gonna add in the oil. Very careful with it. Just go slowly when you start mixing. Because remember, that flour's in there. So we're just gonna go real slow. The way you can tell if there's oil on the top is if you see separations between the dough. So if everything looks smooth and consistent, that means everything's been mixed in. If not, you'll see pockets of indents and stuff like that. So now that that's all done, now let's mix this in. Let me just make sure I remember the amount. And here we go. Let's just make sure you can see this. There you go. Okay, so as we go, Go slow. 
You can go semi-fast at first, but you need to slow down once you get near the end. Or you will over mix it, or sorry, not over mix it. Overfill it and have to take some out. Once you get to the thousand gram mark, what I like to do is I like to cut this off. Make sure that it's nice and clean so it doesn't drip. And then I can pour in the last like this. Until I get the right amount. Now I did mess up a bit on the side here, but we'll fix that. Okay, put this off to the side, put the next one in. Now this one's a lot easier because it's the last one. You can just go f whole hog, buck wild if you will. And you'll notice that it takes every last drop to get the right amount. So don't be wasting anything in here. And remember, the less dirt in your sink, the more, or sorry, the less water and shampoo or not shampoo, uh, soap you have to use to make your product. So when you do their costing, I like to cost everything into each recipe. So for a recipe like this, I would even cost in how much soap I use. So for example, because this one's the messier one, I would look at how much soap I'm using and just guess. It's not realistic to weigh out how much soap you're using f per loaf or whatever like that. It's easier to just guess and be like, okay, so out of the 100% of soap I'm using, for my banana loaves, I'm using, say, 30%. And then whatever that costs, you cost into each loaf. So it's not that expensive. So in the end, adding that in, that soap into the costing only will add in say 10 cents maybe 15 maximum it should be closer to 10 5 cents added into your recipe one last step get this in here nicely into the oil dip it in just do that that's all you have to do make sure there's all the oil on here so that it doesn't stick. So that's all you're doing is you're making a line with the oil. That's it. So let's put these in. We'll come back in an hour. Make sure you do put it on convection. All my recipes are for convection. If you have a conventional oven, Add a bit of temperature and a bit of time to your recipe. Okay, 50 minutes has gone by now, so let's go check out how these look. Ooh, looking good. They look just a bit underdone, but we're gonna check. If it bounces back, it's done. If it's a bit goopy there, it's not done. Okay. So these just need a bit longer, probably five more minutes. And remember, we have it on convection. Now, depending on what oven you have, mine's uh, electric, obviously. If you have a gas one, etc., make sure you know your oven to make sure that the timings are the same. Might be five minute difference, depending on the oven. Five minutes have passed. We're gonna take a look at them again. Now it's bouncing back at me. Perfect. Now well, let's just move them over to the side here. And we'll get on to taking them out of the pan. Now let these sit for a few minutes before you do anything to them. It's been a few minutes now. Now I'm gonna quickly just along the whole edge. Just like so. Even on this edge, just to be safe. And because we got the nice two handles, pull away from yourself. Just lift up. 
There you go. And like I said earlier, this is just like oil. So you can reuse this today, but after today you need to throw it out. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one. The reason why you wanna get this out of the pan fairly soon is so that it doesn't sweat and get liquidy on the bottom. So, our beautiful nice little loaves. This is how they turned out. Nice crease down the middle because of that oil. And because we mixed it nicely, there's no pockets of flour or baking soda or anything like that. If you've liked this video, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I even have my own website. Thank you, and have a nice day.